Are you listening? Uh. Breakthrough yeah. Media. The truth always wins out in the end because it outlives falsehood. Yeah. You'd pretty much have to be living on another planet if you haven't heard the slogan, Black Lives Matter. But did you know that there's a huge difference between the slogan and the organization that's called by the same name? So what is this organization? What are its core values? And should Christians be in support of it? Do you believe that racism is a reality? No. You don't believe racism exists at all? Not at all. There's a lot of good police out there. Personally, I feel like the system itself, the way that the police are trained, I don't find that correct. The Black Lives Matter is a really good thing to make people aware. But what I don't like about it is people are expressing themselves about that in the wrong way. We are treated highly differently from everyone else. You can't say, oh, everyone needs to go find God because in the past they used God against us and they used God to make slavery. All lives matter and people might say, hey, you know, Black Lives Matter before then they'll all eyes matter. Nine times out of ten, police officers, when they stop a black person, they're scared, and I'm scared. So if you got two people that are scared, we're already on that standoffish. I got Martin Luther King right here. And you know, Martin, yeah, he had a dream, man, and all this not supposed to be a part of it right here. So I feel like, you know, all lives matter. Friends, here we are at Huntington Beach, and it's blowing up. As you can see behind me, people are here rallying, protesting. Everyone is going crazy over the whole Black Lives Matter thing and what's going on in our country. Check it out over there. You've got the Black Lives Matter people protesting on that side. You've got the people on this side that seem to be in support of Trump. So we're gonna go around, we're gonna do some interviews, ask some people some questions, and most importantly, bring them the gospel. If I survive! What do you think about the Black Lives Matter movement? So I think the Black Lives Matter thing is a really good thing to make people aware but what I don't like about it is they're putting all of us in the same bucket like we're mm. we all gotta be, get in this bandwagon like we black lives matter or else we're gonna we're gonna tear the world apart Asia what do you think of black lives matter I think it's very important I think the world needs to hop on it because black lives do matter when people say black lives matter they just mean because those are that's the sect of people that are being attacked right now so it's like, if your house is on fire, you're not gonna be like, the fire department's gonna, not gonna be like, oh, I mean, all the other houses matter too. We gotta save the water because your house is the one that's on fire. You're gonna be the one that's saved. Yeah. And so even, I know some people try to use the Bible and they're like, oh, you know, Jesus would want everybody to be inclusive. But even in the Bible, Jesus goes and saves one sheep that needs help while the other flock is fine. So when I hear all lives matter, they're either confused, I think, on what the point is, or what they really mean to say is black people don't matter. I understand why they're saying black lives matter, and I understand why they're saying all lives matter. But for those that say all lives matter, it's like, if you don't understand why they say black lives matter, that's you being facetious. Well, here's one of the core values from the Black Lives Matter website. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Look, that alone should cause major concern for every Christian. The nuclear family, which consists of a father, a mother, and their children, isn't something that is Western prescribed. This is something that was established by God. And any organization that would seek to disrupt the nuclear family sets itself squarely in opposition against the creator of the universe. What do you think's wrong with humanity? They're not humans. That being human, it's natural for people to it's be It's not sinful. natural to be rude. It's not natural to be um, racist in a sense or stereotype. Like, it's very, it's very rude to be judgmental and that's what humans are then that are not human. Yes. Tell me if you think I'm wrong with this. Go ahead. I think the problem is not skin, it's sin. It's the heart, it's not the outward. Okay. The heart of man has to change. Yes, 100%. When yes. God's love comes into someone's heart, they're not racially prejudiced. They treat everyone, they love everyone. So you're telling they, everyone to go seek God and they should be very pure and not judgmental or racist? Yes. Okay, true, but however, if you look back in slavery times, they used the Bible against black people. So how are they going to use God to get over this as well? Don't get me wrong. I believe in God. God is my number one. However, you have to preach love.
because God is love. Now, if you just start with love, then maybe there'll be more kindness in people's hearts. Well, what is the solution? What is the solution to racism? Uh, solution to racism, if I were to put it, sum it up, I think it would just be empathy and people allowing themselves to be uncomfortable with finding out how other people are operating so that they can educate themselves and understand how other people are living. You just personally do the right thing, that evil will reveal itself. And so I think with more empathy, people will notice how much racism is still under the current. I don't know what needs to change. I think people just need to find it deep down inside to realize that we are legit, all humans somewhere, and that you need to have a kind heart and be compassionate about people. Asia, um, yes. We did the love thing back in the 60s. It didn't work. It didn't work? No, it didn't work. Okay. Dr. Martin Luther King had all the right words. He had a dream, and it didn't work. Things have got worse. So we need a revival of the Christian gospel that changes the heart so we love God and love other people. So I've already shared with you where the Black Lives Matter organization stands on the nuclear family. Here's another one of their core values. We foster a queer-affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking. So there you have it. They're not only queer affirming, but they're also opposed to heteronormative thinking. And so as a Christian, you have to ask yourself a simple question. Does the Black Lives Matter platform align with the biblical standards that we're given as believers. Of course, as believers, we know that we're to love those who would consider themselves queer or homosexual. We're to treat them with honor, respect, dignity, but we can't affirm a lifestyle that opposes the Word of God. And so we have to share that truth with them along with the gospel and love and with care. And when it comes to being heteronormative in our thinking, we have to ask ourselves, what is the thinking of our God who's given us His Word and who has designed us in the way that we're to live? What if I told you I identify as a black person? You identify as a black person. Would that be cool? I'm going to look at you like you're a black person. If I were to tell you that I identify as a female, would you be okay with that? Yeah, I think, it, I mean, if we're jumping over to gender, I never thought it was anybody else's business. Like what people, like how they present themselves, that's their personality. And I think people should embrace it. What if I told you I identify as a black female? That's on you. Like, like. I can't, I can't tell you what you think in your head, so I just... So you'd be okay with it? I gotta be. What if I told you I identify as a black female 13-year-old, but I also identify as your daughter? Hmm. Again, these are... Would you be willing to give me money? Child support? Well, you wouldn't be my child, so I'm not too but sure... I'm ident but I'm identifying as a... No, you can't. Why can't I? Because you're not... Because I'm not, not, right? You're not 13, you're not a female. What if I told you I identify as a black female 13 year old who's also your child? Uh, need child support. Well, I need some money. Well, I just say let's go take a test. Right, but what is that going to determine? Uh, if you're my child or not. Right, so words have meaning. No, words do have meaning. Words do have meaning. The New York Post recently posted a video of Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Coulers, where she says, the first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological framework. In particular, we are trained organizers. But then they go on to say, we are trained Marxists. Well, that's where we have a problem. For anybody that follows the teaching, the philosophy of the German philosopher, Karl Marx, will soon realize that he was an atheist, an evolutionist, specifically within Karl Marx's ideology. He believed that if you owned property, if you own anything of a material goods, well then that was the root of all evil. That's dangerous. He says only the government should have any ruling and reigning and ownership of anything. What did he believe about religion? This is what he said. Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world and the soul of soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. He went on to say that if you abolish religion, you're going to find a happy society. Jamie, I want to ask you a quick question. You're out here today, and I see that there's a big rally going on, if that's what you call it. On the other side, I see people uh, seeming to be in opposition to what you guys stand for here. What are you guys all about? What's your message today? You know, we're here to protect our Constitution. It seems like the people across the street, they're anti-American. 
in my opinion, in many people's opinions, this happens every time an election is going to happen. We feel like the left side is race baiting and trying to get Trump out, and that's all this is. And unfortunately, um, the black community they're used as pawns, and it's really sad. Do you think there are racist individuals, though? I mean, some people talk about systemic racism, and I've heard a lot of people say there's no such thing as systemic racism anymore, but do you think on an individual basis there are people who are racist and, and treat people in, uh, in inappropriate ways because of that? You know what? I do. Just like Trump has said, there are some bad apples. You know, there are people out there that are just like there are a couple bad cops. But for the, for the majority of people, people are good. All lives matter, which means is that every race, you got Asians, Latinos, Polynesians, you got blacks, everybody. They, they, we want to have kind of equality in that kind of sense. With all Mike, you know, one of the things that's caused all this stuff to blow up right now is the whole thing that happened with George Floyd. Did you watch that video where George Floyd got killed by the police officer? I did. What went through your heart and mind when that happened? I mean, what were, what were your emotions and, and what are your thoughts on that even now? Uh, like anything, you got to, uh, I mean, it kind of sucks to see um, colored folks kind of getting targeted by the sometimes law enforcement. You know, there's good cops, bad cops, and you kind of have to just keep an eye on uh, law enforcement in general. Mike, are you Latino? Uh, half. Half Latino. So have you yourself personally ever experienced racism? Uh, yes. How did it feel? Um, uh, it didn't feel good. George Floyd, who died at the age of 46 at the hands of a white police officer, was a very cruel thing. But know this, only the Christian worldview and mindset can make such a claim. Because within an atheistic mindset, what is wrong? Only the strong shall survive. The atheistic mindset would applaud such a deed, but not the Christian. The atheistic mindset says George Floyd has value, but you know what kind of value? instrumental value. We find value in his death because it's leading forth a revolution. The Christian comes along and says, no, people don't need to have an instrumental value. They have an intrinsic value, imago Dei, that we all were created in the image of God. We all deserve dignity and respect because we were created by Almighty God. If you're a Christian here today, you don't follow Marxist ideologies. The slogan, Black Lives Matter, it's a good idea. It's a good slogan. But the organization, Black Lives Matter, is a whole nother issue. Do not get caught up. Do not be swept away with the ideologies of this world. We need to have the Bible as our source of authority. We need to return back to its foundation. Let me give you a scenario, and I want your feedback on this, okay? Imagine there was a police officer and he was uh, on duty, on patrol. He was actually working in his neighborhood. He happens to look and he sees his son just a, a ways ahead of him. He goes, oh, there's my son. All of a sudden, this man walks out and he looks at this man's teenage son. He looks and he sees him wearing these really nice uh, Air Jordan shoes worth a lot of money. He goes up to the kid, tells him some lies, lures him around the corner, and then proceeds to knock him down, rip the shoes off his feet, and then begins to kill him as his father walks around the corner. Do you think that his father, as that police officer, should do everything possible to stop that man Absolutely. and to also imprison that man if that, that man should be tried? Absolutely, 100%. So Jamie, let me ask you this. Speaking of morality, would you personally consider yourself to be a moral good person? Yeah, of course, I do. So if you were to die today and stand in front of God and he were to judge you by his moral standard, do you think you'd be good enough to get into heaven? Absolutely, yes. Okay, let me ask you this, and, and, and I'm asking you this. I'm a Christian, so. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me ask you this. How many lies would you say, Jamie, you've told over the course of your lifetime? Quite, quite a few, probably. Not, hey. not big lies, but, you know, the little lies, you know, when you're growing up and you're trying to get what you want, you know, and but as you grow older, you realize it's not worth it, you know. Now, would you consider yourself to be a good person? I try. You've heard of the Ten Commandments? Sure. All right. Uh, the Ninth Commandment says you shall not lie. How many lies do you think you've told over the course of your life? I've probably told a good amount of lies. Yeah. How many lies do you think you've told over the course of your life? Ooh, man, a lot. A lot. What do you call somebody who tells a lot of lies? A liar. So what are you? I'm a liar. How many things do you think you've stolen over the course of your life, Anthony? 
I stole some things. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. So what does that make you? A thief. No, it makes you a lion thief. A lion thief, yeah. Right? I feel like I changed my life a kind of 360 for him to be like, yo, because he, he's a forgiving God. Okay, so. that's important to remember. Keep that in mind, yeah. okay? Now, Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Ever done that? Yes. So, Asia, I'm not judging. You told me you're a liar, <laughs> a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. you got to face God on judgment day. If he yeah. judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. I'm be guilty. All of my actions, I always have good intent. I don't have ill. Always. 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 Yeah. Always. Yeah. How many lies have you told? Lies? I don't know. Everybody lies, though. So are morals subjective or objective? Morals, the morals got to be subjective. They have to be subjective. Yeah. So if I were to kill you, it would be okay because that was my desire. No, nah, it wouldn't be right. But the reason I say morals is subjective because they're decided on by the person. Yeah, all right. So is rape wrong, though? Yes. Right, so... If you and I both agree rape is wrong, what if my cameraman said, you know, rape's okay? Why do we get a win? Why is he wrong? I, I say you're wrong because anything, anything done, anything done morally with the intent to harm others, or the odor, you know what I mean? I agree with you though, but why is it wrong? Because it's just morally, it, it's. I forgot what the word is. Have you ever had anger in your heart towards anyone? Oh, absolutely. So I ask you those questions, Jamie, because I believe, as the Bible teaches, there's coming a day of judgment, and we're all going to stand before God and give account for our lives. And there's a passage in Matthew chapter 7 that's always really sobered me up, especially when I first became a Christian. Uh, it really opened my eyes, and it says this. Jesus said, he said, many will say to me on that day, the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not? And then they're going to list a whole bunch of religious things that they did in his name. And he says, I'm going to say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I'm sure maybe you've heard that passage before. You might be familiar with it. I have not, actually. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty sobering. But just like that scenario I gave you with that police officer and seeing his son, right? God is the God of the universe. And everything that we do, whether it's directly against him or it's to one of his created beings, not necessarily his son or daughter spiritually, but we're all God's children and that he created us. We're going to stand before God and give account for that. That means every lie we've ever said towards someone, right? We're doing it to one of God's creations. Every time we've ever coveted something that didn't belong to us, right? Just like that guy coveting that kid's shoes. Uh, we're going to give account to God for that. If we've had the Bible teaches unjust anger or hatred towards anyone in our heart, we're guilty of murder. Jesus said if we look with lust, that's equivalent to adultery. Yeah. So I got some bad news for you. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, You'll be found guilty. I'm going to fail. For sure. And you're going to go to hell. That's his judicial system that he has set up. Yeah. Does that concern you? Yeah, it do concern me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But also in the Bible, it has the whole stipulation about Jesus having died for our sins so that we can pray for forgiveness and so that we can resolve ourselves because it also inherently says that people are sinners. So we're going we're gonna to mess up. Now, Jesus said that you must repent or you'll perish. What does that mean? I'm not sure Jesus said that. Yeah. Uh, in Luke chapter 13, he says, unless you repent, you'll perish. Hmm. All you have to do to find everlasting life is repent and trust in Jesus. As you're at the moment, you're trusting in your goodness. You're like a man who's going to jump out of a plane and he's going to try and save himself. You can't save yourself on judgment day. Trust Jesus. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. Okay. And you've got God's promise. He'll forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life. Okay. Is this making sense? Yes, it is. You're going to think about what we're talking about? I will. You know, the miracle of conversion is God changes your heart so you love everybody. Well, that's what we need in our nation. That we is need... what we need in our nation. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's the gospel of Christ that changes the heart. Changes. It's, 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 it's not skin deep. It goes right to the heart where God transforms the heart. Mm -hmm. The one thing that we need to acknowledge as people is that we are actually as bad as it gets in the sight of a holy God. You know, our problem is oftentimes we compare ourselves to other people, right? If you see a white sheep eating in green grass, it looks really white. You put it in the barn, let it snow overnight, bring it out. And with that pure white snowy background, it doesn't look so white anymore. So the first thing we need to do is not, not try to make ourselves good people, but acknowledge we're not good. We've broken the law of the holy God. We deserve his wrath and judgment in hell. But then we look and we recognize God sent Christ to come and to pay the price for our sin, Amen. to take our sin upon him so that he would be judged in our place, die on that cross, rise again three days later, cleanse us with his blood as we repent and place our faith in him, and then give us his righteousness as a free gift 
so that now when God looks at us, he sees us as perfect, not with our own perfection, but with his perfection given to us as a gift. I think it's so great that you're out here right now and you're speaking the word. Thank you. I needed to hear what you had to say today. I'm trying not to cry on camera. <laughs> so do black lives matter to Christians? Of course they do. And of course they should. But to answer the question, should Christians support the organization Black Lives Matter? The answer is a resounding no. Help us to keep making videos of this caliber. Become a partner. Go to livingwaters.com for details. And while you're there, check out our books, our tracks, our videos, and our 20,000 online student school of biblical evangelism. And don't forget to subscribe to our free email newsletter so we can keep you updated on new videos. Breakthrough Media. Breakthrough. 